Welcome to the second part of the organic liquid purification question video. Uh, it's quite a snappy title. Uh, and I ran out of time in part one, so hence we've got part two. And really all I got as far as doing was talking about a reflux and then moving on to the distillation. And I really got as far as drawing the distillation setup. Um, and because I pressed the wrong button on the uh, the program I used to make these videos, I've had to redraw um, the setup. Uh, but actually, I've made a slightly better job of it the second time round. I'm getting a uh, I think I think because I haven't used these videos or the video making equipment for a while, uh, I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, so the setup does look a little bit better, and you can notice that I've still labelled the thermometer just in case uh, your drawing is as bad as mine. Uh, I've labelled the still head the sort of three-way piece of kit here. Um, I've labelled the condenser and I've labelled water in here and water out there. And in the first video I said that why that was important. I've labelled this as a heat source. Um, never draw a Bunsen. Um, and I've also labelled that as the flask. And obviously that's the reaction mixture that you're going to distill. That's as far as I got. I didn't talk about how to do the distillation. Um, essentially you can be quite brief when talking about that. Uh, the question here hasn't given you any information on the boiling point of either your reactants or your products. Um, and I would expect in an exam them actually to do that for you. Um, so when talking about the distillation, which is the first step in your purification, um, I would mention uh, collect uh, the distillate um, within 10 degrees C of the boiling point. Now, normally when doing a distillation, that is quite a wide range of collection. Um, but I know that I'm going to do further purification steps on this liquid which we're collecting down here. Um, so I can afford to be quite generous with my range of collection. So that would be the first step and we'd have a liquid in here. Some of it would be propanone and some of it might be a little bit of propantool that was in our original reaction mixture, and a little bit of it might be water, which has come down here. So if we're thinking about how to separate um, an organic liquid from water, provided the organic liquid is immiscible with water and propanone um, is reasonably immiscible with water, um, you could use a separating funnel um, to separate water from propanone. Now, I went through in an earlier video how to use a separating funnel in detail um, and hopefully you remember what the equipment looks like. Um, it's a, it's a, it looks a bit like this and again you're going to see some very amateurish drawing and there's a tap down here. So you put your liquid in or your mixture of liquids in and you put a stopper in the top um, which is here and you make sure the tap is obviously closed, give it a good shake and what you should get is two layers forming. Um, it's rather impressive. Well, it's not that impressive to be honest, but I'm quite shocked that I managed to draw a straight line. Um, and in the question, they've given you some information on densities, and water, as you can see from the information at the start, is more dense than propanone. So you'd expect the water to be here, and you'd expect the propanone to be here. So what you would do is you would drain off the water, you'd open the tap, the water would drip out, close the tap when the layer got down to 
a tap here, and so you're left with, in theory, pure propanone. And you need to write about that in your answer. Um, unfortunately, a little bit of moisture gets left. Well, that's rather clever. I've managed to move the diagram. I didn't intend to do that. Um, unfortunately, you're left with a little bit of moisture on the inside of the separating funnel. So your next step, after having used the separating funnel, so this is probably step three of your purification, if you think that the distillation is step one, and the separating funnel is step two. So step three, which I'm going to put over here, is to use, in fact I'm going to stop and say that again. I was put off by a different colour. Um, step three, um, you, I would put the propanone in a beaker and I would add a drying agent. So a drying agent is usually an ionic solid um, which absorbs moisture very, very easily. It absorbs water very, very easily. So an example of that would be, we used to use magnesium sulfate at university. Okay, we're back on it. Um, put a couple of spatulas of magnesium sulfate in the beaker and give it a swirl. And the magnesium sulfate goes quite claggy and cakey when you do that. Um, and that shows you it's absorbed moisture. So probably add another spatula to make sure you've got all the moisture out. And then either decant the liquid or filter the magnesium sulfate out. Um, so we probably should filter it. Uh, decanting it is a, is a quicker. So then filter MgSO4. And hopefully then you're left with a purish sample of propanone. But if you really want a pure sample of propanone, and that's what the examiners are really after, you need to redistill the mixture. And earlier I said collect the distillate within 10 degrees of the boiling point of propanone. So you could look that up. Um, if you were doing this in in real life, uh, if you're doing an exam, you obviously can't look it up. So I would redistill the mixture and collect within a degree, uh, one degree C, of the boiling point of propanone. Um, and that's it. Um, you'll see that I haven't written everything I've said down. Um, I would do if I was doing this in an exam. I would. I haven't written down collect within one degree C of the boiling point of propanone, but I would write that down in the exam. I would talk about why the propanone forms on top of the water in there. I would talk about the drying agent, magnesium sulfate, okay, and that the water binds to the, um, the crystals and that it's removed by filtering it off. I think this is a really difficult um, type of question. There's so much detail you need to include, um, but A grades and A star grades will be won by students who are including these types of details. I hope that's proved useful. I apologise for how poor the handwriting is and ha how dreadfully poor the diagrams are at times, but hopefully that has given you um, some reasonable consolidation on practical techniques in organic chemistry.